Hi guys, so a while I have released a video where I was talking about my experience of using sponge as a medium for biological filtration. In that video I was saying that for me, in my experience, uh, this is not an uh, effective uh, biological filtration medium because uh, in my case uh, it uh, doesn't last too long, it clogs really fast and uh, it decomposes again in my experience. In that video I was talking mostly about my own experience and uh, I've received quite quite a lot of hate and uh, flurry of um, uh, hateful comments from supporters, I guess, of uh, sponge-based filtration. So everything that I'm going to say in this video is not based on my own experience, because apparently, guys, you're not very happy with or you're not satisfied with my own experience as a fish keeper. So I will be referring to academic research, and there is a list of uh, research papers which I have consulted and where I've taken all this information that I will be sharing with you today. Uh, the list is in the video description. So. Uh, uh, nothing that I'm saying right now is actually my own experience. Uh, one of the comments that I've received most frequently uh, for, for my previous video on biological and sponge as biological filtration is that I have no scientific background to talk about these things. I guess you could blame literally like 99% of fish tubers that they don't have any scientific uh, background in biology or microbiology or ichthyology to talk about things that they talk on YouTube and obviously they still get millions of subscribers but in my case you, you're only partially wrong about that I'm a hobbyist obviously I'm a fish keeper I have lots of fish tanks I have a fish room and I do it in my free time I'm not a professional fish tuber I don't do this for living this is not paying for for my day-to-day -day living uh, in my day-to-day -day job, I'm a senior lecturer at a university here in the UK. I'm not a biologist, I'm not a natural scientist, I'm a social scientist. But in my own research, I use the same uh, statistical me methods, the same quantitative methods that are used in microbiology, in biology, in ichthyology, in lots of other disciplines in uh, natural sciences. What I mean by that, that for example, if, if you know how to use linear regression analysis, binomial regression analysis, or any other statistical models to infer causality, to examine a probability of an event happening, you can use them in lots of different disciplines. They are multidisciplinary. This is what makes me able to interpret uh, the scientific papers in microbiology or in natural sciences because I'm familiar with those statistical models. I have been using them for p the past 15 years in my own research, publishing more than 30 papers in international peer-reviewed journals using these quantitative research methods. I have been teaching them to postgraduate students, even to PhD students. So. Uh, if if you if you believe that I'm misinterpreting these research papers which are uh, provided in the description of this video, please let me know. I'm I'm open to debate. But what I wanted to say before we get started that I do have scientific background and I'm able to read this research because I have high proficiency in those research methods. So right now I will be talking about where beneficial bacteria live in our fish tanks. Can they live on something like a sponge filter or like a piece of sponge foam? Before we, we actually talk about that, it, it makes sense to clarify what sort of bacteria are we talking about. In the hobby we call them beneficial bacteria, we, we call them aerobic bacteria because they live on surfaces, we call them nitrifying bacteria. In science they are called uh, ammonia oxidizing bacteria because they oxidize ammonia into nitrite. They are also called ammonia oxidizing arachia, which is a genus of bacteria, and they are called uh, nitrite oxidizing bacteria because uh, they oxidize, uh, it's a different type of bacteria that oxidizes nitrite into nitrate. More recently it was discovered that in our fish tanks most of the bacteria, nitrifying bacteria that we can find in our fish tanks are actually so-called nitrospira bacteria. This is a separate genus and what they do is that uh, they can oxidize ammonia all the way to nitrate. So they oxidize ammonia into nitrite and nitrite into nitrate. And in a way they replace this ammonia and nitrite oxidizing bacteria. So what, what you're most likely to encounter in your fish tanks in your filtration systems are so-called nitrospira bacteria species. There are obviously hundreds of species of nitrospira and a lot of them are undescribed. But there's plenty of research on nitrospira which allows us fish keepers to understand where do these bacteria live 
under which circumstances and in which conditions. So there are several uh, important critical conditions for a nitrous spear to prosper in a particular environment. First of all, they need high levels of oxygen. It doesn't really matter if it corresponds with high levels of flow or high levels of current in your fish tank, but they need higher than average levels of oxygen. And when I talk about higher than average, that's more than 8 ppm parts per million or uh, over 100% uh, water saturation with oxygen. So high levels of oxygen. So num number two, the most, uh, second most important factor for nitrous spear to prosper is light. They are highly photosensitive, which means that uh, they, they, they can't tolerate bright lights. They cannot live in environments uh, saturated by a lot of light. And number three important factor is uh, pH or water hardness. Uh, nitrous spear need neutral to alkaline uh, pH and water hardness, primarily because of their feeding requirements. Uh, they feed on ammonia, and you know that in water with lower pH, in soft water, in acidic water, uh, ammonia becomes ammonium, and that's not what nitrous spear can feed on. They also need slightly uh, higher carbon to nitrogen ratio, uh, again, for, because of their feeding requirements. And in softer and more acidic waters, uh, uh, carbon uh, carbohydrate are lower than in um, more neutral or alkaline waters. There are a few other more minor requirements for nitrous spear to prosper, but these three aspects are critical towards successful breeding and uh, establishment of nitrous spear colonies in your filtration. So what does it tell us as fish keepers, as uh, aquarists, where do we have nitrous spear in our fish tanks? Well, there's one very useful study which I refer to and the link is provided in video description by Bakchi and others. They have found in their experiments that about 84% of nitrous spear bacteria in our fish tanks actually live in biological filtration in a canister filter rather than in the actual fi fish tank. They found that, that only 14% of nitrifying bacteria actually live on fish tank surfaces, on glasses, on decorations, uh, on plants in our fish tank. The rest of uh, nitrifying bacteria live within the canister filter. So that's uh, ammonia oxidizing bacteria, ni nitrate oxidizing bacteria, and nitrospira. So the, the three different genera of bacteria, they all prosper within the canister filter not on a sponge filter. So can you guess why? Well, I guess, first of all, because unless you hide your sponge filter somewhere in a very dark corner of your tank, it is likely to be exposed to quite a lot of light, especially in planted tanks or pretty much in any other fish tanks where you have lots of artificial LED lighting. So a surface of a sponge filter is quite a hostile environment for a nitrospear because of uh, exposure to light. Maybe inside, uh, in the deeper layers of your sponge filter, nitrospear can prosper because uh, there's less light inside of it. But obviously, depending on the size of your fish tank, depending on your bio load and the size of your sponge filter, uh, you may not have enough nitrospear within uh, the depths of your sponge filter. Well, the other factor that sort of inhibits the growth and uh, breeding capacity of nitrous spear on your sponge filter is oxygen levels. Well, obviously within your canister filter, there will be lots of oxygen exchange. Even within a, a small and relatively less powerful canister filter, there will be less oxygen. Obviously within your sump, there will be lots of oxygen. So this is a very uh, beneficial environment for nitrous spear to breed and prosper. In here, well, you know, you connect uh, an airline tubing to this part on, of your um, sponge filter and the bubbles they come out from here so uh, there, there's quite a lot of oxygen exchange in this upper part of your sponge filter somewhere in here but and you can often notice that the upper part of your sponge filter clogs much faster than the lower part eventually all of it will get clogged but so in most cases unless you're pushing quite a lot of air, quite a lot of oxygen through your uh, sponge filter to the point that everything is shaking in your fish tank. Unless you do something like that, there's not likely to, to be a lot of oxygen exchange in this sink. So again, the problem is not with the sponge as, as a material, as a compound, but with, with this scope conditions that you have in your sponge filter. Again, I will repeat that a sponge is as good as 
probably hard media in your canister on, or uh, in your sump if you provide proper conditions. In my cases, sponge breaks down fast because of high temperatures in my fish tanks. Not in this ones. I, I'll talk about this ones in a moment. Uh, also because of uh, a lot of feeding that I do to my fish in my fish room and uh, it doesn't last for me too long. But it doesn't mean that it, it is a bad form of, uh, it's unsuitable form of uh, biological filtration. In your case, if you have different scope conditions and uh, if you use sponge in uh, an environment deprived of bright light and saturated with oxygen, it is as good as this. And if you don't use high temperatures, you don't wash your sponges too often on a weekly or bi-weekly basis like I do, it is going to last long. So. I'm not saying that it is fundamentally better than, let's say, this is a Chaim, uh, a Chaim Pro, I think, uh, BioBalls or something like that, but it's a solid form of biological filtration. It depends on your scope conditions, uh, so it's different for everyone. And the last point, I'm sure some of you will say, look, I have a planted tank, I don't have any canister on it, I don't have any filtration on it, I have lots of live plants in there. And I still have zero ammonia, zero nitrite, zero nitrate. So do I have a lot of nitrospira bacteria living in my fish tank? Probably not. So what's the deal? And I've had this kind of comments before. Well, I'm on the same page with you. In here I have three heavily planted, filterless, no water change tanks. I have air stones on these tanks to deal with biofilm accumulation on surface, but I don't have any filtration on these tanks. There's not even a sponge filter on either of them. And believe me, they have zero ammonia, zero nitrite and zero nitrate constantly. So what's the deal? Do I have a lot of nitrospira bacteria living on surfaces here? I don't know, obviously, I can only say if I do f lab tests, but my guess is that probably I have limited numbers of nitrospira because of high exposure to light of all of the systems and also because of low levels of oxygen in here. But nevertheless, I have lots of live plants and we have to keep in mind that live plants, especially certain types of aquatic plants and uh, terrestrial plants, if you use them in your fish tanks, uh, they would uh, oxidize ammonia all the way to nitrate very effectively because they are heavy ammonia feeders. Some of them, like you can see this massive Amazon sort plant, a Hinodorus plant, it, it is a massive ni uh, nitrite and nitrate feeder. It feeds on nitrate more than it feeds on ammonia. There are other species that feed on ammonia. So if you have a heavily planted tank, you don't really need uh, too much surface for nitrospira bacteria because your plants will do all the heavy lifting and that's the reason why you would have lower uh, nitrate nitrite ammonia level in planted tanks without having a canister or some filtration on them all right so i'll wrap this up if uh, you found this science format interesting, please leave your comments and I'll make more of these videos. Obviously, I will do research on filtration related topics uh, in uh, academic literature and I will refer back to it. Or whether you would prefer me to talk about my own experience so that you can trash me afterwards. Let me know in either case.